Welcome back to Clive Barker's Hellraiser. This is a series I'm running here on the channel which is released three times a week, Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. We are at part eight now and if you've missed part one please do check the description box down below. You'll find a link to part one but also this these have all been compiled into a playlist now for your viewing pleasure. That being said, let's dive right into it. We left off with Kirsty heading up the stairs into Leviathan with Pinhead waiting, arms outstretched as if ready to embrace. Kirsty is at the top of the stairs now. The lament configuration pattern is on the floor. And we see a quote from John Milton, Paradise Lost. Which way I fly is hell, myself am hell, and in the lowest deep a lower deep still threatening to devour me opens wide, to which the hell I suffer seems a heaven. Pinhead stands there, holding out his hand. Let us begin. And then we flash cut to a room, Kirsty Cotton in a chair, Pinhead holding his scythe, leaning in. Hacking at Kirsty Cotton. Blood pours down. But she's not dead. It's, it's her hair falling to the floor. And as this is revealed to us, Pinhead leans in. Now your turn. Pinhead is in the chair. Kirsty stands before him. What we see is some odd ritualistic behavior. Kirsty has a pair of pliers and begins ripping out his pins. The pain, the agony, and the blood. Pinhead is sat in the chair, blood pouring down his face. You can see the agony he's in. And Kirsty simply states, what happens next? And before us, we see this odd exchange. Pinhead stands, raising his hand, summoning tentacles. It strips him of his garbs, his cenobite robes, his hell priest's uniform. And just as it strips the hell priest, Kirsty Cotton strips bare, both covered in blood, both in an exchange of internal damnation, one seeking redemption, the other embracing hell. And as Pinhead falls to the floor, no nails in his skull, blood, pouring from his body, no garbs, no uniform, just a pool of his blood to keep him company. He says to Kirsty, Savor the pain, Kirsty Cotton. It will be the last sensation you will ever truly feel. And with that, the tentacles reach out to Kirsty, stabbing the pins in her head. They wrap her in a new garb, a new uniform, for a new Hell Priest. And there, before us, the new High Priest of Hell, Kirsty Cotton, the tentacles relinquish their grip, we see the pins in place, but no black leather and latex. Kirsty Cotton is adorned in white and red. And Pinhead, or should we say now Elliot Spencer, walks to Kirsty Cotton. Kirsty. The painter, the creature, the mother of lies. In the beginning, God created. I think I'll do the same. What is this trick? Pinhead questions as he sees almost confetti of flesh flying before him. And then he's bound in white fabric. It's Kirsty Cotton, the new high priest of hell. She suspends Elliot Spencer in the air, the flesh hanging before him, and he says, It is finished. Not quite, Kirsty Cotton says, looking up at him, the disgraced Cenobite. And as he's suspended, we see the tentacles come in with bits of flesh, a face, an arm, a, a hand, and they start latching on to Pinhead. Elliot Spencer. We can see what's happening now. He says it's so cold. What is happening to me? The cold touch of air. The warmth of light. I... 
can feel. And so can I. There is much power in these pins. It would seem Kirsty Cotton is giving back Elliot Spencer his humanity, removing the Cenobite nature from his very flesh, instilling the sensation into the demon-turned-man, creating Elliot Spencer out of what was Pinhead. And then we see Kirsty Cotton walking off, or floating off, and she raises from the floor stones, totems. This is why I am here, she says. And observing the new hell priest's actions, Elliot Spencer, of course, every ruler needs subjects. In your hell, perhaps, but not in mine. These are my friends, and I died for them as they died for me, Kirsty replies. You will forget those sentiments soon enough, Kirsty Cotton, where the last of your humanity bleeds across the stone. Trust me. No, I won't. I've destroyed your box and saved my friends. Have the graciousness to know when you've been beat. Kirsty Cotton believes she knows Elliot Spencer's pinhead's plan, to which she merely just laughs at. A laugh which can be heard across the entire labyrinth, the entirety of the hell dimension. Are the fires of hell so blinding? You waged a war against the Toymaker's creations, unaware of what would occur should you win. What, what are you talking about? Oh, you'll see, Kirsty Cotton. You'll see. And there, in frame, we see Elliot Spencer's blue eyes once black, the humanity restored, but the evil and demonic mindset of a man turned demon, turned man again, remains. Answer me, God damn you! Why spoil such surprises? Soon enough, the unexpected is all you'll have. Now turn, and behold your children, Kirsty. And with that, we see that the stones were in fact Cenobite creation chambers, and walking from them is Marcus... Alex, Bethany, and Edgar, Kirsty Cotton's lover. But no longer do they look human, their silhouettes bathed in light. They look monstrous, demonic. They are now turned to Cenobites. There, Bethany stands, skinned, flesh hanging from her brow, eyes as deep as the blackest cavern. Razor-sharp teeth, hair hanging off her head, a once beautiful woman turned demon. We see Alex, a fiery inferno of flesh. Marcus resembles more a beast now than a man. Fangs hang down from his jaw, eyes, cat-like, and whiskers as well. And there, Edgar, Kirsty Cotton's lover is perhaps the most demonic of all. And Kirsty just stands there in horror, looking at them, her friends, her loved ones. She died for them. She simply replies with, No. This isn't what she wanted. This isn't why she gave her soul to the Hell Priest. This isn't why she became the new pinhead, changing places with Elliot Spencer. I'm so sorry, Edgar, I failed you. Nonsense. Our marriage would have made liars of us, Edgar replies. I don't understand. Now, not even death can do us part. And there, hanging, Elliot Spencer defiant. Release me, curse thee. You are bound by a bargain. Of course. Leviathan wills it, but there's time yet. 
And there, in a final act of revenge, harrowers tear his soul apart. And there, a bloody and gruesome death befalls Elliot Spencer once more. There, the harrowers, demonic versions of Kirsty's loved ones, victims of the old guard, the hell priest, destroy him, rip his guts out, tear his flesh, and break his bones. And we cut to Kirsty Cotton's old house, it's overgrown, and people seem to be moving in or cleaning up. Jesus, this is too great of a place to foreclose on. Beautifully built, old school construction. Hell, if I had the money, I'd buy it myself. I don't know, man. What I hear, owner vanished, missing persons, spooky shit, you know? It's been sitting here empty for a year now. Looks about it. Yep, I'll take that dresser, go check upstairs, and then we'll lock up and get this shit out to the auction. And as the man heads upstairs to see if there's anything else left, he hears a pained expression. Hello, is there anybody there? He walks in the room, the attic. Damn! It's a man, covered in blood. Holy shit, guy, are you okay? Buddy, you need a doctor! I have a name. The body says as he starts to stand up. And there, standing, blood soaked, his skull still etched, I'm Captain Elliot Spencer. To be continued. <laughs>